No parent have the right to force you to marry anybody except if you give the consent in Islam. You love your parent, your parent love you, but they have no right to force you to marry somebody that you do not like. The best among the men is those who are best to his wife. If you want to be the best man, be the best to your wife. And then the Prophet said, I am always the best to my family. He respects his wife. He honors his wife. He never beat his wife. Never yet after the Prophet passed away, any of their wife complained about Prophet Muhammad. None of them. Everybody will talk highly and respect their husband, Prophet Muhammad, because he is a fair, loving, caring husband. And now I'm going to move on to the second part of my duty in this section, which is to invite a man who I only met actually officially um, June the 22nd, 2009, when myself and Abdurrahim Green launched an organization called Islamic Education Research Academy in London, in the UK. We, we based this organization in the UK, aimed at starting a mass movement of people standing up and saying no more lies. We do believe that Islam is the truth. We love Allah. Same way that Islam Net is doing that in Oslo, in Norway today. And my aim today was to, as I say, to introduce Sheikh Hussein Yi. Sheikh Hussein Yi, who uh, many of you have seen regularly on Peace TV and maybe some other Islamic channels, so on and so forth, is a man that is the, is the president of um, Al Qadim uh, organization in Malaysia. Of course, he's based in Malaysia. He's formerly a Buddhist from a Buddhist family. He reverted to Islam. He reverted to Islam, or he became a Muslim after studies. He then studied in Al Medina University, Islamic University. He learned his deen. He went back to his country, and now he's responsible for the Dao in his country. He feels responsible for the Dawah in the world. If you speak to this man, you would think more akin to the karate kid, the mentor of the karate kid. If you see him, you see? Some people have expressed this, you know, that he looks a little bit like him and acts a little bit like him. The difference is, according to my understanding, he has the haq, he has the truth. The karate kid with the truth, that's dangerous, man. Imagine all those students out there. No, 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 no. We're not terrorists, guys. Don't get the wrong. It's the end of the stick. We're not going to go out beating people up. We kill them with kindness, persuasion, beauty, honor. That's what it is all about. And this is what the Sheikh is famed for. So without further ado, will Sheikh Hussein Yi come to the stage? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا 
man yahdihillahu fala mudillalah wa man yudlil fala hadiyalah ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh ya ayuhal ladhina amanu attaqallaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun Ya ayuhan nasu taqurbakum allazi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a wa attaqullah wa attaqullah allazi tasa'aluna bihi wa arham inna allaha kana alaykum raqiba Ya ayuhan ladhina amanu attaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadida يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الهدي حد محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أحييكم بتحية الله وهي تحية الإسلامية السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى as the creator of all things the sender of all prophets and the revealer of all truth we thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his ni'mah, his bounties that we are here today responding to the call of Islam net Alhamdulillah we are here today to think about our deen our responsibility as the khair ummah we ask Allah to forgive the sins that we have committed whether it's minor or major we ask Allah to forgive the sins of those who are present and those who are absent the young and the old among us our parents who have died before all of us who died as Muslims we ask Allah to forgive their, their sins and the sin of the male and the female among us Amin Ya Rabbil Alamin fellow brothers and sisters before we proceed, I would like to share with all of you few adab. In the Majlis Al-Ilm, we are not in just any gathering, but we are in a gathering of Ilm. The gathering to seek the knowledge of Allah and the teaching of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam. We are the best Ummah because we have the best adab the best ethic, the best manners, the best character. The first adab that I like to share with the brothers and sisters is the adab of greeting. We believe that our lectures have begun by giving the greeting of peace, assalamu alaikum. But the response from the brothers and the sisters is not so impressive. Is not good enough because Allah said in Surah An Nisa, "Wa idha hiyyatu bi tahiyyatin, fa hiyyu bi ahsana minha arduha ila al akhir ayat." If you were greeted by the Islamic greeting, you should respond to the greeting in a better way, a better manner. And the Prophet taught his ummah by saying, "If one Muslim," come to you and say salamu alaikum you should respond wa alaikum wassalam wa rahmatullah longer better than the one who offered you if the second muslim will come and give you the second salam salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah you should respond by saying wa alaikum wassalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh if the third person offer you the same salam but they complete the salam by saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh then you should respond the same but your voice should be 
louder than the one who offer you this greeting. This is number one. Now, while we are giving you some advice, we hope that when you hear the word been mentioned, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu been mentioned, please don't forget to make salawat upon him by saying at least sallallahu alaihi wasallam or Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Because if you don't do that, we all will be a loser. Because when you heard the name of Prophet been mentioned, you didn't ever make salawat on the Prophet, we are all a loser. We hope we are not a loser, inshallah. And thirdly, if possible, my humble request, if you are happy with anything that I'm going to share with you, please do not clap your hands. Yeah. We have a better way to show our appreciation to Allah by saying Allahu Akbar. Yeah, because by saying Allahu Akbar, you get reward from Allah. Yeah. That will be a better one, inshallah. Now I'm going to offer you the Islamic greeting again so that we will have the opportunity to act upon this ayah in Surah An-Nisa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless us, brothers and sisters. This is our spirit. We do not want to be a Muslim without the spirit of Islam. To uh, Brother Fat Quraysh, uh, who is the, the brother who have invited us to be with all the brother and sister here. And this is my first uh, time to overnight in Oslo. I have been to Oslo six years ago, but just for a day trip. A day trip. But Alhamdulillah, this is our second time. We are here to stay at least three, four, or five nights with the Muslim brothers and sisters. On the behalf of myself, my family, my wife, we would like to thank the organizing committee and also to all the brothers and sisters who are here with us tonight. Fellow brothers and sisters, the topic that I would like to share with all of you who have been a Muslim, we have two group of people today, maybe three. One is those who are new to Islam. We call themselves as reward. You have also the born Muslim. The majority who are here are born Muslims. Either you are from Somalia, Morocco, you are from Kurdistan or anywhere. You are all majority are born Muslim, the Pakistani, the Indian, Alhamdulillah. And you have among us, inshallah, people who are not yet Muslim. So we have three groups. Reward, because we return back to our fitrah. What the Prophet said, Kullu maulid yulad ala fitrah, fa'abawahu yahawidanihi, aw yunassiranihi, aw yumajjisani. Every child is born clean and pure. Whether he's a Chinese baby, Indian baby, white baby, black baby, Asian baby, Arab baby, Ajnabi baby, all baby are fitrah. If they die before they become Muslim, they have no sin in the sight of Allah. They are fitrah. It is the parent who will make them a disbeliever. It is the environment that will turn us against the truth. So we believe that all the brothers and sisters who are with, here, with us tonight, inshallah, will try our level best to understand the spirit of this religion. Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is a religion of love. And Islam is here to give every individual their rights. Before we talk about human rights, before we American, maybe before the European community talk about human rights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have talked to us about hukukul insaniya, the basic human rights that exist in Islam. 
Now, firstly, I would like to share with you the right. Al-Haqqul Haya. The first right. Haqqul Haya. The right to live. Nobody have the right to say, no. If, we give, if Allah gave us baby girl, there was a time. Yeah, if anybody in the time of the pagan, if you give a baby girl, it's better for you to bury them alive. It's better to bury the baby girl alive. As though as the girl has no right to live on this earth. In the time of Moses, you know, King Pharaoh gave a command that every newborn male must be killed. Have no right. But Islam came here to protect the right of every soul. Killing one soul is like killing whole mankind. This is called Haqqul Haya. To the extent that Allah asked us in the Day of Judgment, Allah said in the Quran, Bi Aizam bin Qutilat. On what sin that the child have committed that they have no right to live, that they have to die? For what? And Allah said, وَلَا تَقْتُلُ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Nobody have the right to kill any soul because every soul belongs to Allah. He is the owner of all souls except what Allah said is right. Because we belong to Almighty Allah who is the creator of all things and He is the only one who can take our life. حَقُّ الْحَيَا The right to survive. Number two, Hakul Karama. Allah said, Walakat Karamna Bani Adam. Wahamal Nahum fil Barri wal Bahar. Warazak Nahum in a toy bad. Wafadal Nahum ala Kathir min man Kalakna Tabdila. Allah said, We have honored the children of Adam, whether he is white, colored, whether he is an Arab, a non Arab. Allah said, as long as he is the children of Adam, we have honored them. Karama. Walakat karamna. Hakul karama. The right to be honored. Male or female. Poor or rich. You have the right to be honored. And Allah said, indeed we have honored the children of Adam. And all of us are children of Adam. And the prophet said, Kulluk min Adam wa Adam in Turab. All of you are the descendant of Adam, and Adam is from clay. And what did Allah say after that? وَلَقَدْ قَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And we have provided for them transportation on land and on sea. And we have provided for them all the bounties, the risky that they need. Allah is the provider. He is the one who gives risk. It's not you or me who gave Provision to our children is Allah who has provided all this provision. Among all the creation of Allah, we, the last creation of Allah, mankind, is the best. We are the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is called the second right. Haqqul karama. You don't have the right to dishonor your wife even you don't like her even she is stupid sometimes <laughs> but not the wife here the girl say here the sister here are not stupid i'm saying yeah sometimes you say what can i do my wife is stupid it's not that she becomes stupid she's stupid because you let her become stupid <laughs> because you don't give her her right the third right haqqul <laughs> ta'lim the right to seek knowledge that is her right. She has the right to seek knowledge. We know Talab al Faridatan ala kulli Muslim. Seeking knowledge is a must, it's an obligation upon every Muslim. So it's very wrong for the man to say, You woman, just stay at home. You just cook for me, become my slave. <laughs> no, no, they are the servant of Allah. Kuluna ibad Allah. They are just like us. They are, like our, they are my, our mothers. To the extent that the Prophet honor the right of the woman to say that if a father or a mother will summon you, 
who should you respond first? The Prophet said, your mother. They ask again, the Prophet said, mother. They ask again, what did the Prophet say? Mother. Alhamdulillah, see, the boys, the men have acknowledged that. Mother, mother, mother. But he still insists. Ask again, then your father. Then we come in. <laughs> then only we come in. So we must not be too proud of ourselves. We are the fourth yeah, stage. We come only after the fourth then. Alhamdulillah. Now that is their right, Hakul Ta'lim, the third right. Yeah, the right to seek knowledge. And nobody can say, no, I'm going to the to the mosque. But my wife, no, no, she don't have to study. She just stay at home. No. If you can teach him or teach her what you have learned from the Imam, from the Sheikh, Alhamdulillah, she don't have to come. But majority of the husbands have failed to teach their wives. Do you agree with us, sister? I don't hear you, sister. Yes. Uh, you see, the, you, they hear now. <laughs> I didn't say that. The sister is the one who confirmed that. But not the man here. The man here are good, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Maybe the man outside, outside, outside. The man here, alhamdulillah, they are good brothers, alhamdulillah. You know? They respect you highly, alhamdulillah. They give you a right. That's why you are here tonight. You know? We are here together to seek the knowledge of Allah. The divine knowledge. Pure knowledge. Not man-made knowledge. Man-made knowledge is corrupted. This is, when you talk about knowledge, you talk about what Allah said and what the Prophet ﷺ have said. This is called pure knowledge. It's not corrupted by anybody. It's divine there is the wahyu and the saying of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now this is the third right Hakul Ta'lim the right to seek knowledge that's why the woman have the right to go to the mosque so it's very wrong for anybody to stop the woman entering the mosque no but if you were asked which one is better for them to perform their prayer at home or oh, in the mosque then the prophet said the best is at home because islam always take care of the woman and the safety of the woman they get the same reward like how the man got the reward if they go to the mosque but if the lady choose to pray in their house they got the same reward like how the man got the reward performing the prayer in the mosque there's a difference and the fourth right we call Hakul Kasab Hakul Kasab system means you have the right to be paid do you know you have the right to be paid? do you know that when you give birth to a baby and you decide to breastfeed the baby is your child too you have the right to ask some uh, some allowance from your husband do you know that sister? You don't know. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So the brother, you know, you save a lot. You know? Yeah. Do you know that you have the right to ask? Because if you decide not to breastfeed the baby, then what? What the husband have to do? The father have to do? What have? Uh, what, can, what must we do from there? We must buy milk. You got to spend. The milk may come all the way from New Zealand or Australia, or maybe from here. You know, so they become uh, the children of Rada. <laughs> you know, and what is who is their father? Who is their mother? You know? and then they said the father and mother is that Mr. Cow. <laughs> yeah. You know that you have the right to do that. You have that, but if you do not ask for your right, there is your sadaka. Yeah, that is your sadaqah you have the right because at that point of time you need it to have all the best food that you can have to make sure you produce all the best milk for your baby you need extra nutrition to your body and it's the right of the husband to give you that special allowance 
But if you prepare to give in for the sake of Allah, wa ta'awanu ala birri wa taqwa, we help each other for the sake of Allah, then you will be given by Allah more reward than what your husband can offer. The right to be paid. Do you know that if before you have a maid helping to clean your house, you have a maid with you, you can say to your darling husband, my darling, you know, I love you so much. You know, I, I know that you love me too. You know. Do we love our wife, brothers? Do we love our wife? Sister, how many times the husband said to you, I love you? Before married, many times. <laughs> yeah? After married, we don't know what happened. <laughs> the man is silent after married. No. That's why they said, before we get married, yeah, before I got married, normally we will, the man have a lot of story to tell. <laughs> no? After married, the man have nothing to say. <laughs> we become a good listener. <laughs> when you talk to the man like you're talking to the wall. <laughs> but not the man here, inshallah. <laughs> the man here good, alhamdulillah. <laughs> when you love somebody, brother and sister, to be very true to all of you, you must express your love. Very, very important. Islam is a religion of love and peace. You must express your love. Do you want Allah to love you more today? Do you want Allah to love you more, brother? Yes. Do you want Allah to love you more, sister? Yes. yes, alhamdulillah. We need Allah's love. Now what I want you to do, one simple matter. You look to your right now. You start from the right. Look to your right. All the brothers, look to the right, to your brothers who's in your right, the sister too. Say to them, I love you for the sake of Allah. Say to them. <laughs> Don't laugh, sister. Say, Allah Akbar. Now look to your left now. Say to them, I love you for the sake of Allah. Say that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And may Allah love all of you. Amen. Because the Prophet did say that if a person loves somebody for the sake of Allah, you must express the love. Don't do it only when he or she died. It's no point. It's too late. If you love your mom today, when you go back before you go to bed, talk to your mom. Salaam alaikum, mom, mommy, daddy, I love you for the sake of Allah. Say it to them. Before it's too late, brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, Allah have loved us more tonight because we, from our heart, is telling our brothers and sisters, we love all of you for the sake of Allah. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, we are talking about the fourth right. Number one, haqqul hayat, the right to live. Number two, haqqul karama, the right to be honored. Number three, haqqul ta'lim, the right to seek knowledge. Number four, haqqul qasab, the right to be paid. To earn a living. Yeah. And number five, Hakul Tamlik, the right to own properties. If you have some property that belongs to you, my sisters, or the property you inherit from your parents, now the man down here married you, Alhamdulillah. Remember, sister, they married you, they don't merit your property. It's not said, what is yours is mine, what is mine is mine. No, no, no. No. What is yours is yours. What is mine is mine. What is mine also is yours. Whatever the man has, some part of his property belongs to you. Even you are a working woman, but the man still have the basic responsibility to support you. That is your right. They can marry with you, but your property is yours. Do you know that, brother? Yes. Alhamdulillah. That's why before you get married, one of the rukun of marriage in Islam, 
the condition of marriage, no? you must give your woman the what? The mar, the dowry. Even one sen is still a dowry. To honor her right to own something. And that dowry belongs to her, not belong to your parent. It is yours. To the extent the prophet said, if you get married and you don't bring any cash with you, and the party have no credit card machine. You cannot use credit card. You know? <laughs> but still you can get married. In our country, you know, the marriage form, they ask you, how much a dowry? 1,000 example, 1,000 euro, okay. Cash or credit, they ask you. <laughs> they will ask you, cash or credit? So you still can get married if you forget to bring your money. But whatever you promise, you must give it. You cannot lie and cheat your wife. If you say 1,000, you must give to her 1,000. If not, the prophet said, your relationship as husband and wife is considered as zina. It's considered as zina. You cannot lie. This is just an example. Hakul tamlik, the right to own property. The gold that belongs to you is yours. Yeah? So you don't have, the husband have no right to take it away from you until you allow it. That means with your radar, then you can, no problem. Yeah? There is hakul tamlik. And then you have the six, number six, Hakul Amma, the right to work. The right to work, the right to do something that you must do as a Muslim. No husband can say to you, you must obey me. Now I don't like you to cover yourself. That is your right. Your basic right. That is your Amma as a Mu'mina. Saliha. You should cover yourself Islamically. Now, if you have a career, you have certain knowledge, you want to be a teacher, you want to be a doctor, do you think you have the right to be a doctor, to work as a doctor, sister? That's your right because you have responsibility upon the knowledge that Allah has given you. People of knowledge, you cannot keep yourself silent. You must pass the knowledge to others. You cannot betray the knowledge that Allah gives you. But you are given a choice whether to do something indoor or to do something outdoor. The best job for the woman is always indoor. Because you have more blessing by doing things indoor. In the future, maybe your parents need you. Maybe your children need you more at home than just dollars and cents. A lot of people work for dunya thinking of dollar and cent they all have dollar they have common they have no common sense they don't take care about the feeling yeah, of what the children need from the father they ignore the right of the wife towards the husband they have no time everything is dunya 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 so you must remember after you give them the right khasab tamlik hakul amal they have the right yeah to work. The last right that Allah has offered to all mankind, to all mankind, not only for Muslims, is Hakul. What is the Hak? You have the sixth one Hakul Haya, Hakul Karama, Hakul Ta'lim, Hakul Kasab, Hakul Tamlik, Hakul Amal. And the last one is Hakul Hurriya, the right to choose. Sisters, no parent have the right to force you to marry anybody except if you give the consent in Islam. You love your parent, your parent love you, but they have no right to force you to marry somebody that you do not like. You have the right to say to them, Dad, I'm sorry. You don't have to humiliate the third party, but you can tell your father, your mom, mom, I'm sorry. No. I can't, I can't accept this. I'm not prepared for this. 
because marriage is not a small thing yeah marriage is something that is very noble and you cannot force anybody so if you are not prepared to accept anybody that was and that has been recommended by your parent you cannot keep quiet sisters don't keep quiet in the wrong time your silence means you approve now this is very dangerous the prophet said the silence from the girls means she agreed do you agree with that do you agree to marry somebody that you don't love do you need to like somebody to get married with him do you need to love him how can you love him you cannot go courting <laughs> how can you love him can inshallah you love him for the sake of Allah the first thing that you must value is his deen whether he love Allah or not whether he prays or not whether he worship Allah or not because there is more valuable than dollars and cents is their love towards Allah and the husband or the future husband the guy come to your house and the time of prayer is there and he pray he'll go to with your, with your dad to go and perform prayer alhamdulillah and for the father if you want to know which is the right yeah, future son-in-law call him to visit you before prayer time before Zohar invite him for lunch and when Zohar come in call him to call Azan in case you want to pray at home now prayer time can, can you pray uh, I'm sorry you know? I have some uh, no, voice problem okay okay you can excuse him Alhamdulillah then you can call an azan alhamdulillah and then after that you say please become an imam huh? uh, you know my, my address is not clean huh? but then you have some sarong you have some thawb at home give him one from there you know that he is a practicing muslim or he is just a muslim by name if he is a just traditional muslim he can still be a future in law make sure that he learn about this deen first make sure that now he become a practicing muslim this is very important it's not the color it's not the car that he drive but it is his deen his akhlaq and this is very important brother and sister because the prophet did warn us it is a fitan it is a fitan if you as a father as a mother have brought up your children to be a righteous children al mara al muslima al saliha a righteous muslim daughter a righteous muslim girl but you pass her to a man who don't believe in allah who don't even perform his prayer or a man who had bad character you know that sis brothers you cannot do that because it's an amana it's an amana how can you trust this man to take care of your daughters and your daughter alhamdulillah is a good daughter faithful daughter to you she had been a good muslima you pass her to a man who don't even allow her to wear his, her hijab after that when she want to pray she no need to pray you just pray once in a week friday <laughs> be a friday muslim you don't have to be a everyday muslim <laughs> there is extremists yeah those who pray five times a day they are extremists do you agree with that brother no there is the minimum to be a practicing muslim now the haqqul hurriya i come back to haqqul hurriya the right to choose yeah the right to decide even you get married sister do you know that you have the right to choose what kind of furniture that you want do you know that you don't know alhamdulillah i hope the brother don't scold me today ah why must he share inform all this to the sisters 
Now we are going to have a lot of problems after tonight. No, no, no. It's time for you to give them their right. You cannot be a zulm to them. You must remember the household is something that the sister is going to stay in. They are going to look at the furniture most of the time more than you. So let them have their right. Bring them along to all the shop and look at the furniture. Maybe they have the certain color that they don't like. You like blue, but they like pink. <laughs> you don't have any problem, pink, but they look, if you have blue all the stuff, and they are always in the house, look at blue, they got migraine. When they have migraine, you have problem. They cannot serve you. Yeah, they cannot be happy with you. You make them unhappy, they'll make you like hell. <laughs> you must remember, yeah. Woman is, is Allah's gift, actually. They can make you live like a king. Yeah? You can be a king if you make them happy. Just make them happy. <laughs> is that true, sister? Yes. Alhamdulillah. I didn't say that, they say that. Yeah. Just make them happy. They don't need diamond. Diamond is not forever. You agree with me, sister? Yeah. Tell the husband, I don't need diamond and gold. I just need you to respect me, to honor me, to love me, and treat me well. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So, brothers and sisters, if we honor the seven rights, and this several right belong to everyone. That's why we have no right to force anybody to accept Islam. La ikraha fi din. Even religion, we cannot force. Yeah. We cannot force them. And that's why we must not only respect the right, only the Muslim. The right is all for all mankind and also for animals, trees. The environment have right upon us. Even the road. The road that we are driving, they're walking, they have right upon us. Do you know? Iyakum wal julus ala turqat. The Prophet said, be careful. Don't sit along the street, along the road. Why? Because the road have right upon you. Do you know, brothers? Alhamdulillah. What is their right? What is the right of the road to us? Yeah. You got to yeah, take care of your eyesight. You don't stare at everybody who walk in front of you. Like if something is something bad is happening in front of you, you have the right to amal ma'ruf wa nahi munkar. And if people will just walk in front of you and give you salam, salam alaikum, you must respond. If 100 people, salam alaikum, salam alaikum, salam, you must respond, wa alaikum salam 100 times. If not, better stay back. Don't sit behind or beside the street because the road has right upon you. You cannot just eat and then throw the rubbish on the road. Because the road has right upon you. You must keep the road clean. This is a certain thing that Islam always reminds the Muslim, but the Muslim have not been yeah, informed about these basic rights. Do you know that the not yet Muslim have right upon you, brothers? What is their right? Their right is to listen to the word of Allah. وَإِنْ أَحَدُ مِنَ مُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِقْهُ مَقْمَنَ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ If any, your neighbor or anyone who come to you, even they are not yet Muslim, they are Mushrik. Don't just leave them alone until you let them hear the word of Allah. Let them know what is Islam. But if they do not accept your da'wah, don't force them. But let them live in peace with you. Why? Because zalika bi annahum qawmun la ya'lamun. Because there are people who knows not about Islam. It is your duty, my duty, to convey the message of Allah to all mankind. It's our duty. And that's why we are here tonight.
to remind ourselves that it's our main responsibility it is very wrong for Muslims to keep Islam to themselves it's a qiyana you must spread the word of Allah the prophet said send or convey the message from me even one ayah who is the one who give hidayah it's not me it's not all of us it's Allah who give hidayah Allah give hidayah to whom he please but it is our duty to convey the knowledge Prophet Muhammad was appointed by Allah to convey his message to the people of Mecca to the people of Medina to the people of Ta'if Alhamdulillah because of the da'wah in 23 years now whole Mecca, Medina, Ta'if all are Muslim today and do you know from do you know Maldiv? do you know Maldiv as Maldiv, brother? Maldiv, the whole island belong to the not yet Muslim once upon a time because of one Moroccan brothers one Moroccan brothers migrate to Maldiv with his family one man the whole Maldiv became Muslim Allah. Allah because the Muslim convey the message of Allah give their not yet Muslim their right to know who is Allah what is Islam do you know that brother and sister that our neighbor have right upon us we know that yeah the prophet have told us even Gabriel came to the prophet so many remind him about his right towards the neighbor to the extent the prophet said man kana yu'minu billahi yawmal akhir fal yukrim jarah whoever believe in Allah and the here after then he must honor he must honor the right of his neighbor whether his neighbor is a muslim or not yet muslim remember i use the term not yet muslim because one day they become muslim don't be judgmental you are not muslim who are you to judge them when my when my, i was calling my family to islam when my friend who don't even make that war to my family he said your family is a non-muslim i said who give you the right to judge my family you don't even call them to islam and you say they are non-muslim i may have the right to say they are non-muslim because i have tried my best to call them to islam that i also do not judge them i do not know maybe the ending part they be become Muslim my mom alhamdulillah three years ago before she passed away I call her I invite mom say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah say that mom inshallah if you say that I will pray for you and all the Muslim in the world will pray for your soul and she said ashadu an la ilaha illallah ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah this is what we cannot we cannot give up and we cannot just judge anybody yeah, by just say because she or he is not yet a Muslim now call them not yet Muslim so that you know that you have a responsibility to call them to Islam do you know that your guests have right upon you the Prophet said man kana yu'minu billah yawmal akhir fali yukrim daifah barakallahu feeh a lot of brother who learn about Islam here that the prophet whoever believe in Allah and the hereafter he or she must honor the right of the guest do you know that if I come to your house I have a right to stay there three days three days free lodging plus free meal yeah I have right Islamically yes it's beautiful if you understand the basic rights that Allah have offered to all of us not only for Muslim and you exercise that right I believe people who are not yet Muslim will respect us people who are not yet Muslim will accept the fact that Islam is the best but because we have not been doing it as a Muslim and that's why a lot of people are very confused they thought that Islam is a very bad religion it because of the Muslim like what the scholars used to say Al-Islam Mahaju people Muslimin the beauty of Islam 
is covered by the ugly Muslims. We hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a good Muslim, a practicing Muslim. Even we know the fact today is talking Muslim is everywhere. Practicing Muslim is very rare. But inshallah, after tonight, we hope all of us become a good practicing Muslim. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Wa billahi tawfiqi wa aqri da'wana. Innal hukma illa lillahi alayhi tawakkaltu fa alayhi yatawakkalil mutawakkilun. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Zakhalakh Sheikh Hussein Alhamdulillah for the uh, enlightening talk and um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give hidayah to the people who are not yet Muslim and Amen, Amen. and allow the brothers and sisters who maybe they didn't yet practice Islam but they say they're Muslim but they didn't practice Islam to to Insha do that inshallah Amen. so the question and answers uh, you know the question answers the rules. We have one microphone here. We have one at the sister's side up there. So I think most of you are familiar with that. You come and you queue here. Right? You queue here if you want to ask a question. Okay? Or up there, if you're a sister, you want to ask a question. And try to re refrain from making long lectures. Keep to the topic. The topic. Human rights in Islam. Okay? And also try to uh, keep the brief questions so that we can fit as many questions as possible. I know Abdurrahim would disagree with that, but alhamdulillah, maybe we'll have a different uh, type of uh, discussion here now. So uh, we'll f take the first question from the sisters. If there are any, uh, as we did before, not yet Muslims who they would like to not vocalize their question, but write it down, then pass it forward, then we will take give preference to those questions. Uh, obviously, that's where we need to address the issues, human rights in Islam. So, uh, is there a sister ready? Yes. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh, this uh, question is from a sister in Islam. Sister, yes. she's married, and her husband wants to marry another okay. woman. Yeah. Because they're permission to four wives, right? And she, she said she's willing to do everything, like as a, as a wife, like she's, yeah. she knows exactly what to do. But he's, she can't say no to him. Okay. Do you understand? And okay. so it's basically that dilemma she's talking about, and she wants to know what to get some advice on it. Is it? Yeah. So advice on polygamy, or uh, you know, more than one wife. The husband's having more than one wife, I think that's really what it is, essentially. Yeah, but, um, yeah, she wants to know how to say no without saying She wants to, she doesn't want to do it, in other words. No, she doesn't want to because it will break her heart. Okay. Okay. She's, that means the sisters, uh, referring to the question just now, that means the sisters saying that when uh, she uh, found out that the husband have an intention to get married a second one, mm -hmm. now she is prepared to sacrifice everything to do everything to please the husband. Yes. With a condition, the husband don't proceed with his intention to get married the second one. Yes. Is that true? Yeah. I know, brothers and sisters, this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sister. There are two great tests that Allah is going to test the sisters. And remember, Allah has said, Allah is telling us, do mankind feel that or think that well, after they said that we are believers, Allah will just accept what they say. No, Allah is going to test every one of us. One of the greatest tests that Allah is going to put through the sister is polygamy and also covering of the aura. These two are great tests for the sisters. But may Allah make things easy for you. Sisters, firstly, as a Muslim, as a, a believer, we cannot go against Allah's rule, number one. The same go to the brothers. It's not that the judges can, can marry anybody you like without fulfilling the condition that you can be fair and just yeah, to all of them. Now, coming back to the question, the first thing I'd like to invite the sister, please love Allah more. 
learn how to love Allah more than anything else. When you love Allah more and have faith in Allah and try your very best yeah, to do what Allah wants you to do and ask Allah to protect you from this. Insha'Allah, only Allah can change the heart of your husband. Not you, not the Shaykh. Only Allah. So, if we want, and that is our dream, of course, for, for the wife, is their dream, their hope that their husband do not practice polygamy. Even Islam allowed so. It's not easy for the woman to accept. Even we know Allah said, yes, the man have the right. But again, we hope that the brother don't misuse this right. You must do it wisely, do it Islamically, not just follow your nafs, but you follow the wahyu. And there will be no fit, fitna, inshallah. But that was the best answer. We cannot go against Allah's ruling. But I want the sister, please love Allah more than anything else. Zakhla khair, Sheikh Hussein. Actually, we're just going to fast track one sister who's on the balcony, um, just to the front, because she's not yet Muslim. And uh, she has a question. And I think she is a journalist. Please. She has a question. Uh, so, the sister in concern, please. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mehta. And um, I have two questions. Um, the first one is um, uh, about you said that uh, women can seek knowledge. And uh, what I wonder is, does that also include seeking Islamic knowledge? And can she also interpret uh, the Quran and the Islam by her own? Uh, the second one is the right of the women to work. Um, can a husband deny her to work outside the home? Thank okay. you. There's two questions there, Sheikh. Did you get both of those? No, okay, repeat it. Help me. I mean, I understand. I'm sorry, I, I just thought want you to would make ask sure me that. I well, understand. One of the, the second question we can deal with first, can the husband deny the right, the woman, to go out to the workplace? That's the one, first one, and the second one, uh, for, uh, second one is, can... And About women seek, uh, being knowledge, knowledge can, providers. Can, yes. she, can she interpret? In public, yeah? In, in public or private? Uh, both. Can okay. she well, that's great. In interpret public? the Quran, for instance? Yeah, like that's wonderful. Did. Thank you. So in other words, can women be scholars and can they give knowledge? In public and in private. Okay. And the second one, can the husband do, deny the right of the woman to leave the house and seek work? Okay. Yeah? Uh, now, when I talk about do the woman have right to work outside, and then uh, after you got married, you may want to discuss this matter with the husband, and if the husband agreed upon, then there are certain ruling that we must follow to make sure that the work environment is not an Islamic. Something that makes us feel secure and also our husband feels secure that wherever the wife is, she is safe, inshallah. If the environment is very un-Islamic, then it's good for the sister to sacrifice her work for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, actually Islam honor the right of the woman more than anyone else because Islam want the woman to be in an environment that the woman will gain her respect. The woman don't have, the same, don't have to face the same problem like the man. And we do not want any man outside there to do something or do something bad to our wife or disrespect our wife. So it's not that you can't, but it's always good to look into whether the environment outside is Islamic or not. Whether they give you the right to worship Allah, to dress up as a Muslim, if they honor you with all this right and the environment is good, inshallah, I don't think any good husband will stop you. Normally, it's that case. There's no one. The second one, can the Muslim become scholars? Of course, in the time of the Prophet, we know Aisha is one of the scholars among the Ummah. And she is the Ummul Mu'minah, the mother of all believers. And she, all the Sahaba used to seek advice from her. But if there's men around who can do all this job, then we want the men to carry out their main responsibility first. We do not want the woman to compete with the men in this area. The woman have better role to perform. You must remember, sister, behind every successful man, there is what? There's what? 
And you see, the brother said there's woman, so you don't need to be in the front line. No, you are the backbone of all the men. So don't feel that you are a second class, you're always left behind. No, you're very important. Very important for all the men. But today, because the woman want to be in the front line, now the man always behind you. And it's not good. The men become half men now. <laughs> yeah. In some country, the men become so lazy, they don't even want to work. Because the woman is so, you know, so active, so hard working. So the woman will go and work and get all the money, and the man will go for the second one too. <laughs> because you are so busy, Finding money, so the men get money, and then they go for the second one. This is worst scenario. I got this when I was in Hong Kong. I found a lot of sisters from Indonesia. They are all mates. They're working in Hong Kong. They get salary thousand, maybe about three hundred US dollar per month. It's big money, and they send all this money back home to their husband. You know what happened to their husband? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I don't think you like these things to happen, right? Yeah. Be a good wife, inshallah. Allah will protect you. But of course, you can be a sister, you can be scholars. There's nothing wrong. But if there are men still yeah, there to do what they must do, let them do it. Do you know that the best teacher is the ladies? You are like a madrasa, you are like a mobile school to your children. The future leaders always come from all of you because by nature the woman can express more than the man if the man is here for one hour for one hour or say one whole day the man is here seeking the knowledge from the scholars after they return back to their home if their sister who's not here ask the husband what have you learned from the chef, MashaAllah, we have so many chef from UK, from Malaysia, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. After 10 minutes, finish. <laughs> he have been hearing the lecture for hours and hours, he only can express for 10 minutes. <laughs> there is a man. But if the woman who are here for one day, they can talk about it for one month. You know, that's the beauty of the woman. Every single word, everything, they take it seriously. They are very committed sisters. It's like going to shopping, you know, you go to shop, it's easier. Go to shop, you just go and buy, don't, don't waste a lot of time. But the woman, before buying, they go for window washing. <laughs> window shopping first, window shopping. Pop, pop, pop. At the end, they come back, they can tell you for one week. What happened one hour, they can share with you for one week. <laughs> this is to show that the woman is, by nature, they are very good in expressing whatever they learn. They are not like the men, they keep it to themselves. That's why the men die before the woman. You know? <laughs> they always keep in their heart. Keep, 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 keep. The woman, they share, they share, they share. Alhamdulillah. You know? May Allah bless you, sister. Father. Any other question, please? <laughs> I guess that sort of um, almost wraps up the question and answer session, really. Um, we've got a, uh, a question down here from a brother. Um, so, would you like yeah, to go ahead? Yeah, my name is uh, Olav, and I'm a not yet Muslim, I guess. Uh, <laughs> okay. But I have uh, lots of respect for Islam, um, just to say that. Uh, but I have two questions about uh, like hard or con controversial issues. Uh, the first is about what you call the right to choose. The right and to uh, does this involve the right for a Muslim to become a Christian, or a Jew, or a Buddhist? Uh, secondly, also on the issue of men and women, um, does a man have, in some cases, the right to beat his wife? Now there is a, dis a disagreement among scholars on this issue, but can, do you think a man, in some cases, can beat his wife? Can beat the wife? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, like, use, uh, use uh, violence. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. The second, the man beat the wife? <laughs> Is that what you say? Yeah, uh. beat, like, uh, yeah. You use violence. Like, okay. uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, did you get those? Yeah, yeah the first one. The, he the was very close to us, so, yeah. you know. The second one is beating um, a wife. The huh? second is beating. Okay. No, no, no. 
No, no, you know now the husband is being yeah. beaten by the wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, the first one is about do we, we say that the hak to choose, the hak al hurriya the hak, the, the right to choose, do you mean that a Muslim uh, child or the Muslim uh, guy or girl or boy have the right to choose their religion? Normally, we are all born as Muslim. And it's the duty of the parent to bring up the children Islamically. We believe that one, you bring them up Islamically, they will remain and stay as a Muslim. But when you come to the time that they decide to choose, of course, they will choose Islam. We believe in that. They won't choose other because Islam is the truth. It's the final religion from Allah to all mankind. Islam is not a religion only for the Arabs or the Malays or the Pakistani or the Indian. No. Islam is religion from Adam. Whoever believes in Adam, in Noah, in Abraham, Moses, Jesus, all of them, they are all from one religion. Wadinuhum wahid, the Prophet said, Al Anbiya are ikhwa. The, all the prophets are like brothers. They are different from, they have different mothers, but their deen is wahid. So we believe that everyone who understands what is Islam, they will never leave Islam. They will always choose to be, to live, and to die as a Muslim. Because that is the best choice. What do you want other than Islam? Islam gives you all the right that you need. And Islam is here to give you happiness here and the hereafter. Whoever dies as a Muslim, he do not just benefit in this world, like what Allah said, the best prayer for you to pray is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azaban Oh Allah, give me success here in this world and give me success in the hereafter, the next world. And this is what Islam provides us. And if you believe in Moses, you believe in Jesus, you believe in Abraham, all is inviting all the people back to one God. There is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second one, can the woman beat the husband? Is that what I... Uh, <laughs> is that what you say? Yeah? Other side. The man beat the woman. Oh. I, I, I don't know how many men beat their women. Yeah? But Islam wants you to honor their rights. If you have to beat them, I don't think you can beat them with anger, no. You beat them because you love them. <laughs> now the sister get confused. You beat the woman because they love the woman? Yeah, sometimes you beat your children. Do you gain your children sometimes? Not in this country, but back home. <laughs> yeah? In my country, if my children is naughty, I have all the right to beat them. I have all the right to discipline them. If I cannot discipline them by word, I will use my action. But what happened? At the end of the day, the children become righteous children. You need to use certain reinforcement to discipline certain people. You know? But we have all the right because Islam gives us that right. The right of a father, the right of a mother. Do you know what, what my mother used to say to us when we were big, when we were grown up? He said, don't be rude to me. Don't ever be rude to me. If you are rude to me even now, even now I am a, a father now, even now I will slap you in front of the public. <laughs> and you know what Islam said? There is the right of the mother. There is her right. When she is still a mother, she has all the right to do what she thinks is right for her to do. And you have no right to disrespect her. Even if she is not a good mother, you still must respect her right as a mother. It's very different compared with other value. They say, no, no, no. You must respect the right of the child. You cannot beat him. How about our right? 
Where is our right? You talk about the children's right. How about the father's right? The mother's right? Islam is fair to everybody. Now can the husband beat the wife? Yeah, if there's a mosquito there, you can beat her. So you kill the mosquito. Yeah. Yeah. You don't beat her out of anger. It's haram. It's haram to be zulm to the to the girls, no to their wife. And that's why if you want to just beat her to show her that what you say you really mean it the prophet used to remind his ummah you only can hit the certain part of the body that she don't feel the pain she know no, that she don't feel the pain she know that you beat her because you love her you know? so it's a different kind of feeling you know when the muslim woman was beaten by the husband she know that the husband love her he, she will not fight back she will not sue you in the court inshallah you know? <laughs> but if you are unjust to your wife brother please be careful what the prophet say you know your wife have right upon you you must remember and you have no right to be unjust to her because who is very unjust to anybody here Allah will judge you there you beat her Allah will beat you back <laughs> is worse Allah punishment is worse you know that when we die brother if you have passed through the sirat you know the sirat in akhirah there's a sirat there's a bridge after the long bridge you will be facing a small bridge called al-qantara there's another short bridge before you go to jannah even if you have passed through the big one the long one you cannot just enter paradise until whatever you have done unjust to somebody here that person your wife forgive you if she do not forgive you she have the right to ask Allah you know, for her right to beat you back <laughs> she cannot beat you here she can beat you there <laughs> and it's worse you do not want your wife to punish you over there no so be kind to the prophet said khairukum beautiful saying of the prophet the best among the men is those who are best to his wife if you want to be the best man be the best to your wife then you can say you are a best man the man cannot say to the man you are a best man no <laughs> only the woman have the right to confirm whether this man is best or not in Islam you see and then the Prophet said I am always the best to my family he respect his wife he honor his wife he never beat his wife never in her time uh, in his time the lifetime the Prophet that after the Prophet passed away any of their wife complained about Prophet Muhammad none of them everybody will talk highly and respect their husband Prophet Muhammad because he is a fair loving caring husband Allah Akbar so be a loving and caring husband can we be there can we be the loving and caring husband brother so one the last thing I want to remind all the brothers please please tonight you see your wife tell her I love you my darling yeah. 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 We have the last one or? Uh, no, that's not the last one, Sheikh. No. That was the most important one, though. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Um, oh, we've got a uh, question from the brother here yeah. in the uh, hat over here. Bismillah. Uh, uh, what? Yes, let, let the brother first. Brother first. He's been waiting since the yeah, last speaker, the last actually. Show. We've got to give the people their rights, human rights, right? Thank you. A'udhu billahi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum. Kum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. So just I wonder about uh, the right to wear for uh, women, uh, especially uh, when it comes to hijab. Hijab. Because uh, in Norway it has been uh, very good last years. We had a problem, but uh, the last, this last year now it's uh, too much uh, disgusting about to make... Uh, the hijab for the the women forbidden 
at schools. Mm. So, uh, no. but we want, uh, we ask because we want to come in dialogue with uh, there is uh, some parties. Why? Because if you may say, don't come drunk to school, so they don't come stone, don't come with weapon. So uh, they say because it's uh, disturbed. When you come with hijab at the classroom, it disturb uh, maybe other girls and other boys. No. So it's better to come with. Uh, uh, they have another ID to come with uh, maybe a short T-shirt and tight jeans. So maybe the boys will for, feel more comfortable. So I don't disturb them. So we okay. just want to, if you can make no. some. Uh, no. no. I think we got the question. Did you get yes. the yes. question about, about the hijab, hijab and the rights of hijab? Yes. In, in the in right to dress, you have to cover yourself. Now, fellow brothers and sisters, any Muslim country you go today, you see how tolerant the Muslim is. Like my country, Malaysia, example. Honor the right of every citizen. If you are not yet a Muslim, how you want to dress, that is your right. But even though we give them their right, every right has a limit. Now this is very important. Don't think that when you have your right, that means you have the right to do anything you like. No. Every right, there is a hudud. There is a limit. As long as you act accordingly, that do not yeah, dishonor the right of others, then you are in the right path. Like Allah said, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ In Islam, you have your way of life, we have our way of life. Now, the not yet Muslim in my country, I give you one example. In my country today, the school uniform is general. For the Muslim girls, they should wear their hijab. Because they are Muslim, that is their right. For the people who are not yet Muslim, they have their uniform. That's how they were dressed to the school, the same school. And there's no problem at all, because we exercise human rights. Not like the country today, they say human rights, human rights, they champion human rights, but they only talk about their rights, and they disrespect our rights. That's why there's no peace. When you want peace, you must learn how to give everybody their rights. There is under the limit of do not yeah, disrespect other people's right. Now, today in my country, not Muslim girls, not yet Muslim girls, Chinese girls, now they are dressed in long dress like the Muslimah, going to school. It's not that the school imposed this law, but they feel that it's more modest, more feminine for their girls to dress long dress to the school than just dress skirt. They have long skirt, but they want to dress long dress, like how the Muslim are dressed up by themselves. And it really gives them special kind of respect. They feel more secure, like the brother said, when you cover yourself properly, when you respect yourself, people will respect you. I don't know whether it is good for anybody to dress anything they like to dress no today we have a lot of people we believe that we grow with our dress when the newborn baby were they born dress up with some anything any baby who has born any child has born do they come out with something cover their body no they are born naked we are all born naked alhamdulillah then we start to cover them up. We put a napkin on them. We buy some dress for them based on their size. Now they are just one week we dress up with the dress of a one week dress. Now the baby is growing. Now he's one year. Do you use the same size of dress upon the baby? No. You got to grow with your size. Now, now the baby is Five years, do they still wear the one-year-old dress? It didn't fit them. Now they go according to their size. Now they are five years, they will dress the dress of a five years. Yeah, child. Now they are 15 years old now. How do they dress? Like five years here? Something is wrong with their dress. I think maybe we are having problem. No. 
Our mind do not grow. Our body grow, but our mind do not grow. I mean, it is practical that you grow with your dress. Your size. Yeah. The dress also keep on growing together with your size. Islam honor that right. Yeah. Islam honor that right. I would say that now the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us who are the human rights champion. Or who are the real hypocrite? Just talking human right today, human right tomorrow. After that, no, no, you have no right to wear hijab. <laughs> there was not a problem before. Do they have this problem before? No problem. Why today there is a problem? What happened to these people who are civilized people? People who consider themselves as, you know, uh, the, the champion of human right. No, that's very wrong. That means whatever they claim before, they are just hypocrite. They are not sincere. When we say we respect the right of every individual until today, Islam honor the right of everybody, but everyone don't honor the right of the Muslims. It's so sad. But lastly, brother, there's a lot of hikmah. Maybe it's time. I don't know. I feel everything there is a hikmah. Warakul mas'ala sa'ada. Behind all problems, there is always a wisdom. Maybe it's time. Allah wants the Muslim to be by themselves. To educate their own children. To give the right education to their children, the right tarbiyah. Because the system that we have today are not helping our children to be salihat wa salihin, to be righteous children. The system have failed. They give only dunya, where Islam, the education in Islam provide you dunya and akhirah. It's a balanced knowledge. A knowledge of dunya and akhirah. It is the best knowledge. Maybe, I don't know. I will say that whatever happened, there is a wisdom behind it. We must open our eye. Now, if you're given a child, you want to send them to that school to go against Allah's rule, or you decide for homeschooling. Which one is better? Which one is better, brother? Homeschooling is better. You educate your children. You make them a salihin wa salihan. That is the best investment. And that is the best asset for you because the Prophet said, Iza mata ibn Adam in qata'a amalu illa bin thalasa. Sadaqatin jariya ilmu yuntafa'a bih wa waladan salih yada'ulah. The best thing that you can have is you have righteous children and if you die, these children will pray for you. And the Prophet said in the Day of Judgment, there was some man who Allah have ordained that he's going to hell fire. And he know he's going to hell because he know that he's a bad guy. But at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command him to go to Jannah. He was shocked. Is Allah playing with me, joking with me? I know I'm going to hell. I, I'm prepared to go to hell now, you know. Because even in dunya, I was saying that everybody want to go to Jannah, Jannah. Nobody want to go to hell. I'm going to hell. You see, because, you know, Jannah will be packed. Hell will be, you know, you don't have to queue up, you know, you can just walk in anytime you like. <laughs> they play around with words, you know. But this guy, Allah said, go to paradise. He was shocked. And then Allah said, do you know why I call you to go to paradise now? It's because of the prayer of your righteous child. Your righteous child can ask Allah to forgive all your sins. This is how good if you can have a system to train your children to give tarbiyah, to educate them to be righteous children. So brother, don't have to worry. Everything there is a hikmah. Just get prepared for the best, not for the worst, for the best. If people don't respect our right, we will have our patience and we will do what we can do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't feel regret, regret about that. Maybe there's a hikmah behind this. You know? And one day, inshallah, Allah will give us back the izzah. 
the izza is from Allah not from human your children who wouldn't be respect because he have a PhD he has a master also Allah will respect them if they respect Allah and Allah will give them their right and they will be respected by others so brothers and sisters may Allah bless us may Allah guide us may Allah strengthen our iman and once again to all the brothers the good brothers listen to the command of Allah Ya ayuhallazina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara O you who believe save your soul and please save all the children and your wife from hellfire and may Allah bless you. May Allah guide us. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Don't forget to pray for us. And we will always remember all of you in our prayer. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. We, we still... Okay. Yeah. I know it's a little bit premature. Your beautiful dua. May Allah accept it. Amin. Amin. We have uh, a last question, question from, from sister? a, a young uh, sister up, uh, on the balcony. Please go ahead. Um, Assalamu alaikum. We have, actually we have two questions. Two one questions. Is, yeah, because they've been waiting. And one is from a non-Muslim and another is from a Muslim. And we was wondering. Two yeah. questions is okay, brother? Alhamdulillah. Okay, thank okay. you. One at a Just time. Just start. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sis. My name is Ida, and I, I am a non yet Muslim. Yeah. Um, Allah yahdik. You have talked a lot about how Islamic men should treat their wives. Um, as I have experienced that Muslim men often disrespect non Muslim women, I wonder what the Quran says about this. The Did you understand? Yes, uh, the yes. sister has said that. Um, that the Quran, I mean, what does the Quran basically say about disrespecting non Muslim women? Mm -hmm. Disrespecting non Muslim women, and some men, Muslim men, disrespect non Muslim women often. That's your yes. experience. Oh my goodness. May Allah help some us. Um, if that is, uh, <laughs> that's bad news. You mean, you mean Muslim men disrespect the. Di Muslim men are disrespecting. Non, or non yet Muslim to be woman. yet, to, yet be to be a Muslim. Muslim. Um, yeah. Can we just ask the second question in, at the same time, or should we? Should just we just let this one go ahead? Because yeah. Subhanallah okay. is okay. Sorry, a little bit difficult for me to understand. Uh, Sorry, sisters. Inshallah, if you know any of these Muslim, uh, these men who call themselves Muslim, disrespecting the Muslims, the this, the not yet Muslim sisters. If they are here, please uh, see me after this. <laughs> uh, bring them to me, inshallah. Yeah. It's our duty to advise them. Yeah, maybe they have uh, not been uh, given the right advice. Yeah. I wouldn't blame them 100%. We humans sometimes are ignorant of a lot of things. About the not yet Muslim rights. You know. But anyhow, if I'm not here, you still have a lot of imams. Yes, scholars, the local scholars, you can approach them or you can uh, contact with uh, Islamnet, they will know what to do. Because we Muslim men will not allow any man to show disrespect to anyone else. It is our duty to respect everyone because all of us are children of Adam. We are all like a big family. We care for each other, we share with each other, we always pray for them to be a Muslim. Amin Ya Rabbil Amin. So please, brother, don't show any disrespect to other people. If you do that, you are the cause of the great fitan. You remember, the Prophet always remind us that an mu'min manfa'atun. A believer is always beneficial to others. A believer is here to help, yeah? to protect, yeah? not to destroy, yeah? inshallah. And lastly, is that the, the question? Yes. Yeah. Just, just, just disrespecting. Yeah, disrespecting the non nouns billah. Yeah, it's very sad for this thing to happen. It's our duty to show good character. How can people attract to Islam if you don't show them the goodness of Islam? Not only by word, by name, but by action. And the last one, the last question. There's a last question from yeah. the sister. Sister, another question, please. Um. 
the last one sister now assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh um, thank you brothers for uh, for a very good lecture i just have a question about uh, the parents rights over the children the parents right now yeah i know that you should uh, you should follow you should listen to your parents when whatever whatever they ask you you should do what the, whatever they tell you but when it comes to sunnah for example when you want, for example, you want to grow your beard, and they say it's only a sunnah, don't do it, and they get really, really mad. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, mm. or other typical sunnah muakkida. No. Can uh, is it right to say that it's not necessary? Because I've ha I've heard some. Can I call them liberal liberal shiuch, who says don't, when it's sunnah you don't have to. <laughs> You're laughing. Okay. No. You don't have to follow. Uh, follow it. Zakamah. Just let. Just uh, keep your parents happy. What do you say about it? Okay, sis. Now, if I'm not wrong, the sister is asking that uh, the right of the parents. Of course, Allah said, "Wa qadar Rabbuka Allah ta'abudu illa iya wa bil walidin ihsana." Allah command you to worship Allah, and after that, you must honor thy parents. But in the same time, the Prophet Sallallahu remind us. When we respect human, even our parents, we cannot respect them in a way to do something displeasing Allah and the Prophet. If our parents stop us from doing something that we must do as a believer, we have no right yeah, to follow and obey them. But the question is very important. Some scholars was asked about how about if a, a, a man or the son now want to keep beard? Is that the question, sister? Yeah? Beard, yeah. They want to keep beard, and now the father or the mother said, "No, no, you must respect us. It's your duty to honor your parent. I disagree. You cannot keep your beard because you look ugly. <laughs> you know, you look older than your father." Hmm? I tell you the story of a beard. Allah give me this beard. Little beard. Yeah. I want to have the full one, but Allah don't give me the full one. Since I was a Muslim in 1968 until today, this is how much Allah give me. But one day, when I was still very young in Islam, when I was sitting in a, in a, in a, in a ferry, you know, moving from the island to the mainland. So there's another group of elderly Muslims who are clean safe, you know, clean safe. You know? And then they look at us, they start to gossip about us. They say, what happened to the young people today? They are so young, but they want to look old, you know. They keep beard, the beard also look like the beard of the, of the what? Of the goats. Yeah. So they make some sound. <laughs> now I am I'm not a very patient man before. My family, my friend uh, who knew who am I didn't know who am I. I'm not a very uh, patient man before. Normally Last time, we were known as street fighter. <laughs> we are people on the street. Fighting is our hobby. <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, after I enter Islam, Allah give me the patience. But even how patient am I? Now, this guy, this born Muslim, elderly Muslim, if he do not want to keep his beard, that is his problem. Because it's his face. It's not my face. <laughs> but when I want to keep this beard because I know Prophet command me. It's not a sunnah. It's wajib. Because there are a sunnah that is sunnah. There are sunnah that is wajib. Any command from the Prophet it is no more a sunnah. It's wajib. But if the Prophet just recommend you not a command then it becomes a sunnah. 
There's a difference between sunnah wajib, sunnah sunnah, sunnah adat, sunnah ibadah, sunnah mu'akkad, sunnah gair mu'akkad. There are different types of sunnah. You must understand. A lot of Muslims are so confused about this sunnah. If they say it's sunnah, then it's true. If they don't understand the concept sunnah, it's, uh, it's just a sunnah. The Prophet said, Inna Allah la yaqbalu tatawwa'a hatta tu'addi farida. Allah will not accept anything that is optional if what is obligatory is not being fulfilled. Honoring your parent is wajib. I give you an example a sunnah. The sunnah prayer after zuhur, example. Or before zuhur prayer, the sunnah qabliya wa ba'diya. If your parents say, don't pray that sunnah. I want you to come to me now. Now, responding to the call of your parents it is more better than performing the sunnah prayer. It's true. You get more reward for that. But if something the Prophet commands you, it is the duty of the parent to accept it. By right, the parent should be very, very proud and be thankful to Allah. Now his son loves the the teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know that the Prophet said, "La yu'minu ahadukum hatta hawahu hatta yakuna hawahu taba'an li ma jitu bi." You cannot be a true believer until you command your desire to follow my teaching. Now, keeping beard for the man, for the man only woman you cannot keep. Yeah? <coughs> woman you cannot keep the beard. Yeah? For the man, the Prophet command you to keep the beard. So what do I say to this man who belittle me with my little beard? I raise up my voice, but I don't shout at him. I talk to my friend. Alhamdulillah. No, we are goats. No, goat you can slaughter for hajj. You can sacrifice. Goat you can eat. You know, goat you can make akika. Alhamdulillah. But people who have no beard. They are like Mr. Pick. They are like Kinzir. Do you find the Kinzir have beard? Have you seen any Kinzir with beard? No. If they have beard, there's no more Kinzir. Now that guy get very upset now. You say that I look like a goat. Alhamdulillah, goat is halal animal. There's no problem. But I say that group, there are people who keep their face, yeah, I mean, clean shave. They are like pig. Now they get very angry now. He said, I'm a goat. I said, that he's a pig. <laughs> and you know, the Muslims don't like to be a pig. <laughs> you know? So, just to be very frank, sister, yeah, it's the duty of the mother, a good mother and a good father, to encourage the boys, the young boy, to keep their beard. May Allah bless you for that. And may Allah give us the patience and the understanding about our deen. Those don't misinterpret sunnah. Not all sunnah is sunnah. There is sunnah that is wajib. And keeping the beard is sunnah wajib. Barakallahu feek. May Allah bless your sister. And I think that's all today for me. Yeah, that's all alhamdulillah. So, do you want to stay? I am I'm ready to stay on. You're ready. Everybody ready? <laughs> but Four more hours? Have. The whole evening? <laughs> 40 days? Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. May Allah Beard. bless. Um, oh, salam wa <laughs> Okay. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Uh, Hussein Yi uh, from Malaysia. Alhamdulillah. That was uh, very enlightening and very um, beautiful answers he was giving there. And I hope they uh, address some of the uh, queries that the not yet Muslims and some of the Muslims had regarding their faith, regarding how to worship Allah, how to be better Muslims, you know, and how to, uh, you know, perform the deeds of Islam in a better fashion, inshallah. Mm -hmm.